feeder on this press is a actually a litho feeder. So the same type of front end as a sheet fed lithographic press has. And Sakurai, the manufacturer of this press, uh, also makes lithographic presses. This uh, job that we're working on here is a four-color image. It's a photograph that uh, Sam took on a trip out uh, to the west. Uh, Sam is a mountain climber, and uh, he t usually takes a camera with him and, and gets some pretty spectacular pictures of, of the mountains. And he is doing a four-color reproduction of this image, and uh, now uh, he's going to be setting the press up to try to register this black to the other four colors because he, to the other three colors he's already printed three colors and we'll be adding the black these adjustments are manual and um, after many years of experience with this press uh, Sam has learned uh, exactly how many times to turn that to move the screen minutely to get the images in, in register. So now what we're printing is the black over the cyan. This is a uh, UV ink that we're using, and the dryer is not really drying the ink, but curing the ink using ultraviolet. That ink is a polymer that, uh, poly or a material that polymerizes very rapidly when exposed to this very strong UV source. And you can see the warning on here. Uh, you really would not want to look at the light from one of these bulbs because it's very, very powerful. The prints emerge from the dryer over here, and they get stacked 
at the end of the press. And so this is the, quite a long press here. About half of the press is, half of the length is the dryer or the curing unit. The uh, air in this lab is very humid today. There's no air conditioning here. And because of that, the paper has absorbed uh, quite a bit of moisture. And when it goes through the uh, UV curing and the dryer over here, the uh, dimensions of the page change. So what we're now doing is running the paper through the press uh, and not printing on it so that we sort of pre-shrink it. And uh, we will then take that paper and run it again through the press, and we will be able to maintain the same dimensions uh, through each of the passes through the press. We're going to use a densitometer here to measure the ink density. And this is... Uh, a quality control check so that we know the ink, the darkness of the ink, the density of the ink is the same from uh, one corner to the other corner of the, of the press sheet. And if the numbers are not uh, within our tolerances, we'll have to make adjustments on the press. Uh, Sam has just explained to me that uh, when he measures the densities here, uh, what he's doing is checking to make sure that it's the correct density. Uh, if it is not correct, he will correct that by m mixing the ink, by adding something to the ink and uh, produce the correct formulation. Now, you were saying that once you have that correct formulation, this is a very stable process. Yes, and assuming we make the image carry the same every time, then what will occur is we don't have to go back and make any different adjustments on the press to change the density. We control that by the mixing process itself. This uh, makes th this, uh, this process a lot easier to set up than the litho process where you have control over the ink density on the press, and that's, that's one of the things you have to do during make ready. This eliminates that particular variable from our process so we don't have to worry about it on press itself. With uh, this process, we uh, can do as many colors as we want to. In this case, we're doing a four color reproduction of an original photograph. That was the black ink that was printed. And uh, this is the final uh, four color reproduction, the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And uh, we're using a special kind of ink here that allows us to print those four layers of ink. And, and uh, because the ink ha has a, a small amount of water in it, uh, the, the ink will dry down very flat on the sheet and allow us to, uh, to get this very nice effect. Now, I notice here that the screen is, is quite coarse compared to a litho print. This is a 50-line halftone screen for this particular job. So this would be uh, appropriate for uh, printing posters and things like that. Uh, it would not be appropriate for printing something uh, like a magazine. It would be appropriate for viewing at some distance away, not for viewing looking at, at your arm's length away. So it's made like a poster or something we put up as a display. Okay, so that's one of the that's one of the things we'll we'll be talking about is uh, the appropriateness of, of these various processes for uh, for given applications. And uh, one of the things we can see here with screen is if we're doing uh, photographic reproductions, uh, we can we can uh, do that for effective uh, viewing from a distance, but not up close. And we'll see we'll we'll be able to compare this to the other processes later on. Well, I think I've got enough tape now, and I'd like to thank you for all your help. Uh, this will be viewed by a lot of students in Webb Auditorium at some point, and, uh, and you'll be a star. Thank you very much, Frank. Good luck.